just in my head instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs and I swung at him. Kate Moss was one of the most recognizable supermodels in the mid 90s to mid 2000s. She championed the wayfish ultra thin modeling trends that we still see reflections of to this day. She and Johnny Depp dated for a few years back in the 90s and it was an infamously messy relationship that ended sourly. In interviews after the breakup, Kate claimed that she missed Depp because he was the proper influence that she needed at the time. Despite what seemed like an amicable breakup, Amber Heard has raised Kate's name in the latest drama over her and Johnny's highly publicized defamation trial. She claims that he was harmful towards the model, but is it true or just another lie Amber seems increasingly at ease with spouting? Kate Moss was born in London, England to a bartending mother and an airline employee father. She has a younger brother and a half sister. Kate began her modeling career very early into her teens when she was recruited in 1988 at the age of 14. A modeling scout came up to her in an airport in New York while she was on her way home from vacation in the Bahamas with her family. By 16 years old, she had shot for a few magazines who described her style as dirty realism or grunge. She then was featured in her first major labels campaign for Levi's. It propelled Kate into becoming what was labeled as the quote anti-supermodel of the 1990s, which starkly contrasted to the models of the moment, such as Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell, who were known for being extremely tall with noticeable hips. Moss was the poster child for the wayfish ultra thin with very little curves look that was popular in the mid 1990s. It led to a lot of scrutiny over her weight, which people deemed to be excessively thin, basically impossible to obtain if your genetics don't gear that way. But for Moss, she stated, quote, it was just the time. It was a swing from the more buxom girls like Cindy Crawford, and people were shocked to see what they called a waif. How many times can I say I'm not anorexic? To that point, however, Kate was heavily criticized when she interviewed for Women's Wear Daily in 2009 and was quoted saying the phrase, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, which she described as her motto to keep her strong in food intake control. She was accused of encouraging eating disorders, which were already running extremely rampant due to the fashion at the time which pretty much solely catered to extremely stick thin women. That being said, Kate's popularity was undoubtable. She was named the sexiest woman of the decade numerous times by different magazines, she has gold statues dedicated to her, and she has multiple high profile artists muse. There are tons of songs dedicated to her, about her, or the that mention her. As far as her relationship with Johnny Depp goes, however, they began dating in 1994 when they met at a bar in New York and were introduced to each other by a journalist. When they first met, Johnny was 31 and Kate was 20. He had just split from Winona Ryder. Kate and Johnny would become the it couple of the 90s, jetting around the world together and always being spotted at events. They absolutely were not camera shy and loved public displays of affection. In 1994, a friend of the actor told People magazine, quote, they can't keep their hands, lips, mouths, and legs legs off of each other. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing for the couple. They were spotted a few times having extremely heated arguments with one another in public, and then Depp was arrested after he and Moss trashed a hotel in New York. He had to pay out thousands of dollars in damages that he owed to the hotel. Now, in 2022, after Amber and Johnny's explosive relationship ended in divorce, and Johnny first sued the Sun in England for defamation, Amber dragged Kate Moss into the fight. In the 2020 UK libel trial, Amber claimed that Johnny Depp had pushed Kate Moss down a flight of stairs after a fight in the 1990s. This claim kind of came out of nowhere and wasn't fully pursued by the court at the time as it didn't have much to do with the Sun and their role in the libel. But in 2022, now that Johnny Depp is suing Amber Heard directly for defamation of character that led to his loss of a leading man status in Hollywood and thus a loss of revenue, Amber has been made to recount the more brutal and instrumental fights in their relationship. This also means rehashing past accusations she made against her ex. Amber recounted a moment when she and Johnny had a particularly nasty fight in front of her sister. Amber said that she threw a can of Red Bull at Johnny, which struck him in the back, adding that she called him some vulgar words. She said that he then became enraged and followed her up a staircase. Amber said he grabbed her, at which point her sister Whitney intervened. Quote, she threw herself in the line of fire. She was trying to get Johnny to stop. Her back was to the staircase and Johnny swung at her. I didn't hesitate and wait. I instantly thought of Kate Moss and stairs. She said that the thought of Kate Moss led her to action. 
quote, I, for the first time, hit him square in the face and he didn't push my sister down the stairs. Up to that point in our relationship, I hadn't even landed one on Johnny. Johnny looks stunned and then laughed at me and then lunges at me again. Then she recalls that security staff stepped in between them and separated them, diffusing the situation. Now, going back temporarily to the 2020 Sun trial, Amber stated, quote, he pushed Kate Moss down the stairs. I heard this from two people and this was fresh in my mind. I reacted in defense of my sister. I had for years been Johnny's punching bag, but for years I never hit him. It was the first time after all these years that I struck him back. Although a representative for Kate Moss has yet to speak out on being named by Amber as a source of past harm from Johnny, I absolutely would not be surprised if that means that Kate may be called to testify her story in front of the court. Yet, as is the same with Elon Musk and James Franco, she doesn't actually have to come and testify. In Virginia, if the case isn't directly related to you, you cannot be forced to testify and can reject the request. But if we go back to that volatile night at the hotel, police stated that they found Johnny, quote, in a state of possible intoxication and Moss uninjured. A criminal court judge dismissed the charge of criminal mischief against Depp on the condition that he stay out of trouble for six months. He then paid the hotel $10,000, including more than $2,000, plus the bill of the remainder of his reservation. In a 2012 interview with Vanity Fair about her past relationships, Kate said that she cried for years after their relationship ended. Quote, there's nobody that ever really has been able to take care of me. Johnny did for a bit. I believe what he said. Like if I said, what do I do? He'd tell me and that's what I missed when I left. I really lost the gauge of somebody I could trust. Interestingly, when Amber Heard mentioned Kate Moss by name, Johnny Depp's lawyer seemed to celebrate in court. The reason why his lawyer seemed so elated will become clear when his team is finally allowed to cross-examine Amber Heard next week. But it is likely that they probably have evidence to refute this claim and label it as bogus. Quote, when a lawyer gets excited about something you said and they have yet to cross-examine you, you should be scared, is what one commentator said on the live feed. Interestingly, because Kate has only ever spoken highly about Johnny Depp since their relationship ended, Amber stating that he he would have hurt her means that she opened the door so that they can present evidence to show that Johnny never hurt Kate. If she made the claim about Vanessa Paradis, Johnny's ex-wife of 11 years, then they would have even more fuel to the fire. Basically, by voicing things that are just rumors, now the claims can be proven or disproven by the court. I guess we'll see in the time to come just how deep Kate's role in the trial will be. You know, in America, you ask if somebody's feeling good and they never tell you the truth. No. No. You just said just about good. Yeah, pretty much. Just, no one ever just says I'm... Paul Bettany used to be most known for his role in the Marvel movie franchise as the voice of Jarvis and portraying the character of Vision. But these days, he's in the news for a very different reason. As the media continues to froth at the mouth over the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp defamation trial, Paul has been dragged in for his role in supporting Johnny while he was in the relationship. Both Paul and Johnny made alarmingly aggressive text exchanges about Amber and her body. And so now, as the trial forges on, we see just how toxic Paul's role to play in the doomed relationship is. Paul Bettany was born into theater with both of his parents, stage actors and a manager. Tragically, when Paul was 16 years old, his eight-year-old brother would pass from an accidental fall. The death was so impactful on Paul that he dropped out of high school and left home, traveling to London to be a street performer. He lived in a small flat and earned money by playing guitar in the streets as a busker. After spending some time working for an elderly home, he decided to enroll in the Drama Center of London. Paul became instantly known for his talent, appearing in plays like Romeo and Juliet, Richard III, and a BBC production of Oliver Twist, all by 21 years old. He then slowly started to drip into film and television, working small parts in film while still maintaining his presence in theatre. Then, a Hollywood director saw Paul's audition tape and was so impressed with it that he wrote a character into the movie A Knight's Tale as Schauser. From then on, the director was so impressed that he showed his friends the audition tape, including Ron Howard, who promptly cast Bette in A Beautiful Mind alongside Russell Crowe. From then on, he would go on to be in the Wimbledon movie and a few other notable films. He also married Jennifer Connelly and appeared alongside Johnny Depp in the movie The Tourist. Most notably, he played Jarvis and Vision in Iron Man and later on in the Avengers movies. Jumping back though to The Tourist, Paul became very close with his co-star Johnny Depp and they considered each other to be best friends. Now, fast forward to now, Paul Bettany was involved in the defamation trial of Johnny Depp versus The Sun, but he is much more direct 
directly involved in the current trial going on with Johnny Depp against Amber Heard. Due to his closeness to Johnny, it's only natural that he would be front and center to some of the uglier instances of the ex-couple's extremely toxic relationship. Due to the court proceedings being broadcast live for the whole world to see, we can get extremely up-to-date information on the trial itself. We learn that Johnny Depp claims that Amber Heard absolutely loathed Paul Bettany. Apparently, she felt threatened by the large amount of time that Paul and Johnny spent together. Quote, Miss Heard despised Mr. Bettany, mainly because we had become such close friends. And for her, he was a threat and would take me away from her. With regard to if Paul Bettany was getting the attention from me, that was a showstopper. It would cause all kinds of unpleasantries. He even recalled one instance with Paul, his wife Jennifer Connolly, and their kids. Depp says that Heard and Bettany got into a debate over lunch and, quote, whenever Mr. Bettany tried to make a point, she would talk over him. And then it just started to get quite rude. She got mean and she got loud. He also recalled that during this debate, Paul's 18-year-old son entered the conversation to speak on something that he had learned while in school. Quote, he voiced his opinion and Miss Heard demeaned the young man to the point of where he burst into tears and walked away. Johnny also said that he told Amber that her behavior was unacceptable and that she had no right. Quote, you cannot always be right. You should try to be wrong sometime because you might learn something. These comments came after private text messages between Johnny Depp and Paul Bettany were read aloud to the court and audio recordings were heard wherein Depp called Heard fat and plenty of other obscenities I can't say. Paul's name was initially brought up when Johnny claimed that they often would do recreational substances together at times. Their texts also became evidence, including one in which they joked about drowning and burning Amber. Although as a rebuttal, Johnny did say that it was a Monty Python reference that should not be taken literally. That being said, Paul did state that he felt extremely embarrassed to have his texts read aloud to the court during the Sun defamation trial. He also made a slightly contradictory statement to what we know to be true when he stated that he didn't know Johnny when he was married to Amber. Quote, I knew him before, but we hadn't spoken for years. During the marriage, I didn't know them, so I wasn't around for any of that. We live in a world without context. Despite this statement, it has also been said on multiple records that they consider each other best friends. And also, why would you talk about a woman you don't know like he did during the text? And also, what about the incident at the dinner with Paul's son? That statement honestly doesn't make much sense to me, but I couldn't find any information on whether or not he had been called out for it. Now, for her part, Amber has yet to testify, but will do so soon. Johnny said his piece, but will definitely be called to the stand a bunch more while the trial is still ongoing. On Tuesday, we heard from officers who responded to a domestic disturbance call to the couple's penthouse in 2016. They said that they found no evidence of a crime and that Amber was uncooperative and refused to sign or file a police report. The court also heard from the manager of Depp's Bahamas Island and a forensic psychologist who assessed his ex-wife. The manager recounted an incident in which she separated the couple during an argument in which Amber allegedly threw a can at Johnny. Dr. Shannon Curry, a psychologist, testified that she had diagnosed Amber with both borderline and histrionic personality disorders after an extensive evaluation, and manifestations of these can include desperate attempts to avoid being abandoned, including reporting to legal methods such as claiming harm from her partner. That being said, it also emerged that Dr. Curry is not board certified, so it is likely that the diagnosis will prove void. We'll probably see Paul Bettany himself testify alongside other famous individuals like Elon Musk and James Franco, who both have been accused of sleeping with Amber while she was in a relationship with Depp. If it is proved that she did cheat on him, likely the trial could start to sway in Johnny's favor. As it stands, despite the court seemingly always being in favor of Amber, the public is very heavily on the side of Johnny. A lot of people accuse Amber of being a sociopath and an evil person. I can't really pass judgment and I refuse to do so until the trial is over, but it really does seem like this may be the final battle between the couple. Although this is a defamation case and not a physical harm case, every point is seeming to be heard, so I can't imagine anything being upheld in court beyond this case. Once this one is done, it is almost certain that the whole debacle will finally be over, whether it sways in Depp's favor or Amber Heard's. With so much contradictory evidence to go through, it seems like this trial is far from over though, and as Paul is set to eventually take the stand, only time will tell what he further reveals about the time he spent with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Camille Vasquez is the woman of the hour as the Johnny Depp v. Amber Heard trial is nearing its end. We've watched as she skillfully deconstructed Amber during her cross-examination after she spent a few days giving her side to the story of her and Johnny's clearly toxic relationship. As the trial has gone on, fans are starting to take notice of just how close Johnny and Camille seem with one another, and dating rumors are starting to surface. As the case has been live-streamed, we're watching Johnny and Camille giggle to one another and seemingly flirt in the courtroom. And honestly, it's got fans divided on the appropriateness of such a relationship. Although not much is known, 
known about Camille's early life, we do know that she is an associate in the firm's litigation and arbitration practice group. She graduated from University of Southern California in 2006 and law school in 2010. She specializes in defamation suits, so that would obviously make her perfect for this case. Her biography from her lawyer practice reads, quote, Camille is adept at formulating offensive and defensive litigation strategies for private clients. She also has extensive experience handling parallel reputation management and crisis communication issues arising from these engagements. Her specialty is also apparently providing advice to her clients about how to navigate media strategies during high pressure periods, especially when it comes to protecting the reputation of her clients. And now, as Johnny Depp's lawyer, she is tasked with proving his innocence in the case that he has pitted against Amber. To quickly catch you up to speed, Johnny Depp is suing Amber Heard for defamation due to an opinion article that she had penned back in 2018 for the Washington Post, in which she alleged that he harmed her throughout the relationship. Although she didn't name him directly, it is pretty obvious to everyone just who the article is about. So now, in court, Johnny has to prove to the judge and to the jury that he never harmed Amber during their time together, that she is trying to take down his career by sabotaging him and labeling him as a cause of harm. Amber, for her part, is suing Johnny Depp back for emotional damages as this is the second time he has tried to sue her. She states that if she wins the court case that he can no longer allow to continue to sue her because it forces her to relive her trauma. The trial is taking place in Virginia, which is one of the few US states that allow you to live broadcast court cases. Due to this, the media has taken a hold of the trial and has a grip on every aspect of it in a way I don't think many people ever seen before. Everyone has an opinion on who is right and who is wrong. Interestingly enough, a new hero has emerged in the case and that's Johnny's lawyer. She's incredible at what she does, having dissected every aspect of Amber throughout her time in cross-examination. And viewers of the broadcast have certainly picked up on this. Camille has also been lauded for her efficient cross-examination of her, regardless of the outcome of her trial. Her constant objections to the Aquaman actor's attorney Elaine Brendhoff's line of questioning also left Brendhoff visibly frustrated. YouTube viewers also expressed their love and respect for the lawyer, with one writing, quote, a star is born. Camille is very ladylike. Love to see her Latino fans there supporting her along with the rest of the ladies that seem to have been charmed by Miss Vasquez's elegance. Finally, a role model for American girls to admire and respect. Another responded, quote, I am just amazed how people from all over the world unite to support Depp. I hope you will return to an acting career after the trial. A third one penned, quote, love this, she deserves fame after this beautiful Beautiful woman. She's also, as you've seen above, stolen the hearts of fans. She's been really affectionate with Johnny for a lawyer, touching his shoulder and giggling with him in court. When she leaves the courthouse, she's often greeted by fans, hers and Depp's, yelling, quote, we love you Camille. Clips of her cross-examination of Heard have gone viral. Over the course of the six weeks and counting trial, Vasquez has generated admiration, speculation and adulation online. She's been cited as an inspiration for Latinas with legal aspirations. One woman on Twitter stated, quote, had to meet Camille Vasquez and tell her what an inspiration she is to so many Latinas. To which another user replied, quote, as a Latina entering my final year of law school, no one has gotten me as excited to join the field like she has. The president of the Latina Lawyers Bar Association says that this enthusiasm could well help bolster law school roles. They also say that Latinas make up only 2% of the legal profession, despite, quote, being dressed in in a suit, she's also been confused for a litigation or interpreter in the court by viewers of the trial. Quote, it's important for us to be seen as professional and competent. So we celebrate that Ms. Vasquez can be a zealous lawyer and that that's enough. It's wonderful she can be a model or at least an inspiration for other attorneys. There's also so much praise online for Vasquez's courtroom style. Quote, the world waited for this roasting from Camille. Camille Vasquez is an unrivaled star of the Depp trial. Her measured tone, incisive questions, total command of the facts and clear belief in her client are laudable. And now there's a rumor surfacing that Johnny and Camille may even have a behind the scenes relationship that goes a little bit beyond the professional line of duty. In court on Wednesday, Norbert Brian Neumeister, a metadata expert, was brought in as a rebuttal witness for Depp, who testified about photos of Heard's bruising and said he believes several photographs were modified. While Neumeister was being cross-examined by Heard's legal team, Depp appeared to become frustrated and stared angrily across the room at the defense. His tense behavior at that moment prompted Vasquez to gently touch the actor's arm in what appeared to be a calming gesture and perhaps to indicate to him not to stare 
Garrett Hurd's lawyers. Jester has made it to social media where Depp's fans are delighted in the moment. One TikTok post with more than 22,000 views has the caption, quote, stop, Camille is so cute. While another with almost 3,000 views is captioned, quote, truly has the best around him. This moment comes just a week after Vasquez was asked if she and Depp were romantically involved. In a video obtained by TMZ, Vasquez was openly asked about the rumor while leaving circuit court in Fairfax County. She laughed off the reporter's question and refused to give an answer. Vasquez also went viral last week when her courtroom tactics were compared to those of the character Elle Woods in the movie Legally Blonde. So sadly for fans, Johnny and Camille seem not to be dating, or at least they're keeping it under wraps until the defamation trial is over. But honestly, given the seriousness of the defamation case, it's somewhat surprising that someone actually asked Camille about those Johnny Depp rumors. After all, she seems to have bigger fish to fry. Recently, cross-examining Amber Heard herself as she returned to the stand. The rumors surrounding Johnny Depp and Camille Vasquez just show how invested the general public is with the ongoing defamation case in Virginia. This is partly because of the two celebrities involved, but also because the footage is so readily available for fans to consume. And plenty moments from the trial have have gone viral as a result, including the grueling testimonies of both Depp and Amber Heard. Folks are making their opinions known about the trial both online and in person via Starbucks tip jars. But honestly, if there is any chance that Camille and Johnny are dating, there is absolutely no way that they would ever make it public until the end of the trial or even in the weeks afterwards as it would be seen as a conflict of interest and could very well get Camille fired from her position. Honestly, I highly doubt anything has happened at all. She's a professional woman with a successful law practice who is just comforting her clients while he's dealing with a stressful situation. Not everything has to be Hollywoodized. That being said, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction.